Hey guys, we're here at uh, Binder Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy. I'm Professor Dave Binder. This is my man, Charles Leeton. Uh, we're going to show you a little guard passing system we've been working here at the Academy. It's a bit of a novel approach that's been working real well for us, so check it out. What Charles' daily Hiva hook does is it controls my knee. He has the option of turning my knee in, which exposes my back. I theoretically want to work my toe out point my knee, killing the daily heave hook, but you are going to fight guys who are very, very strong, uh, really good at holding these positions. Some guys use lapels to reinforce the position. What I found here is this little uh, knee killing the thigh, what it effectively does is it stops his hip movement. Once my knee comes in, driving into his thigh, I've locked his hip in one direction. So even though my knee's pointed in, he's no longer connected to my knee, so he can't manipulate my weight. This toe, by extending, is what's locking him in place. If I'm just here, I don't have a good connection here, he can still curl his calf in, and now he's in half. So here now, I've effectively stapled his body in one direction. His hips cannot turn this way. He has a little strength in this leg, but mostly it's just from the strength of his knee movement. He doesn't have a lot of hip wiggle. So that's what makes it so effective in that I can leg drag. I can under hug. If he does use his knee strength, I just go with it right into my pass. So I think of it less as a guard pass as a guard killer. Uh, I have this belief that it's hard to pass a good guy's guard when he has an established guard. But if I'm able to neutralize his attacks, I now have a lot of things I can do to him. I put the onus on him to be worried about my pass as opposed to his attacks. I'm sure there are some attacks from this position, but I haven't yet encountered them. So I just feel very comfortable. Once I get to here, I can be very established. The most common variation on this pass is he's going to try to do some sort of scissor motion, knocking me this way. He's uncomfortable here. He doesn't want to sit here. So he's going to be pushing here. I just let it go. I let my arm come through, and I can start to establish my position. I call it tabling. So I'm fighting. I'm pushing down when I feel resistance. I bring it up. Control the collar. I'm going to straighten my leg bring my knee and turn the angle. From here, I can wait till he starts to push me. I put pressure as he comes. I'm just gonna back step for finding my control. Next little option, I'm gonna table again. One, straight, two, knee down and trap here. Very often now from right here, it's easy for me to swing my arm underneath. He's gonna be fighting, trying to turn into me and I just swing and come to control the collar. From here, uh, an important detail for me is I like my palm to be facing his leg. I don't like here, my elbow flares. Some guys, I'm doing a good job of trapping his arm, but if his arm does get free, they can start pulling my elbow and maybe cause me trouble. So by turning my hand, it naturally puts my elbow into my rib. Now if Charles tries to pull my arm in, very difficult. I'm getting my control here. I, on my toes, I'm driving. Here, I like to just slide my hip in. Keep controlling the hip. And we have our control. Once again. Tape. Catch. My arm comes under. Scoop. Nice grip here. Palm facing the leg. Elbow in tight to my wrist. On my toes, dropping my hip. All right, guys, so we're just going to keep on this little path. Same thing on five, table, trap here. We have a bunch of options to start passing this way. Sometimes I like to bring this foot behind here and trap his shin. From here now, Charles can try a bunch of stuff. He can start moving. I have great pressure. I just let this knee start sinking into the floor. Clear. And I have it again. Another option. Same thing, tabling, kill. Right here, I can, if Charles doesn't go to push me, I can just start hugging the head, 
and bring both knees through and pass as well. Here I like to bring both knees. Here I feel very stable. Here Charles can move around. And I'm able to get my guard pass. I'm also leg drag from the more established position. Here. Starting to come. He goes to push my chest. I drag it across. Here I like to keep this arm in. If I take it out, sometimes he fights back in. So I'm here and I think of putting my shoulder to my hand. Now I have a nice staple on. And I can come in for my control. Take collar control. Here, always pulling my elbow in. Straighten for a second, drop, turn the angle. Notice my whole body turns. He comes trying to bring the leg. I'm going to drag. Head to the far side. And I'm in for my control. Here, I'm stuck in Charles's collar and sleeve. Very hard guard to pass but I can use the same idea. My knee comes in, I change the angle. Even if he's extending here, because I've committed his hip to one side, he can't follow my arm very well. Here I'm back in. I find this to be a very stable position right here. He can try to close his guard. As long as I keep flaring this foot out, my right foot, flare, and he comes through. Doing a great job following. So I knee in, kill the angle, his hips committed. He can keep trying to push me. I circle my arm, get in tight, open, nice and wide here, both knees. Here he might try to grab my ankles with his feet. Doesn't matter. I'll kill that space. Ready to pass. We can get into some uh, rolling back takes as well from this position. Try. Notice how my foot stays off the floor the whole time. One of the benefits is a lot of time this arm gets trapped under there with this pressure. Uh, so from right here, sometimes I can table, get my armpit over. Now I have a rolling back tip. I'm gonna keep this hook very tight on the thigh. You can go double pant grip. You can control pant and knee, whatever you feel most comfortable. I'm gonna start to roll over my right shoulder. As I go, this hook keeps going, and this hook's going to slip behind. From here, I like to catch the hook with my ankle. One, two, out the hip here. Bring them down with my twister hook. I have the horse collar ready. Into my seatbelt, finding my second hook. back in for my attack. Now there's some difficulties that can arise is if Charles hides this foot under here. Now it can be a little dangerous to start using this because he can elevate me and I might lose my control. But all hope is not lost. The foot's under here and I start to make a grip to the inside of his knee and pushing his knee out. Now I'm going to straighten one Two. I start to push. He's going to naturally try to bring his knee back. I bring it in. Now I have a good shoulder smash from here. I can look to start passing to the back side. His foot trapped underneath. I go an in inside grip. I start open. Open. Use my hook. Push. I use his resistance to come back. From here now, I'm ready to take the back. We can start getting into Kimura's guillotines off of this as well. Table, kill, here. Sometimes they go to push me. I'm going to circle my wrist and control. I'm going to reach over the shoulder, not the tricep, but over the shoulder, as I jump my weight to the top of his head. Here we have a bunch of back takes, a lot of different attacks. Uh, what I, one attack I like to use a lot right here is I go belly down, all my weight here. I push my weight into my hands as I build my knees. It starts already creating that bend. 
Now I'm in, ready to attack Camoros. Ready to attack my Armox as well. So we're fighting, table, control, string. Get the little door hinge hook. From here he goes to push me. I circle, control the wrist. Over the shoulder and jump. If Charles tries to come up, I have my back tape options. But usually I like to just control the top position if possible. Here it's a little hard to get up, so I walk away, all my weight into my hand. Now that I build up, his hands are already ready to go behind me, and I can attack my Kamoros. We also have attacks that we can start working on somebody's neck from right here. Tail, straight, control. So I'm um, here. If Charles is able to achieve an underhook, he kicks up. I'm going to reach over, connect my hand. Now I'm going to jump onto my toes. Now on my butt. Arm shoots deep. Bicep crunch. Or I grab. Here I don't really squeeze like elbows together. I think of pulling up. Trying to touch my neck with my thumb. And I get my choke. One trick I like is to grab the material by my forearm and hold here for my squeeze as well. I often use it as an open guard passing system as well. We're here, we haven't engaged yet. I don't want to step in and give him my leg. So I'm going to go uneven hand. The leg I want to attack, my hand goes down. The other leg, up. So we're right here, I go one, and I just enter right in for my leg drag. So it's all in this little hand positioning. We're here fighting. As I come, I go. So I'm opening in opposite directions. I lead with my knee. Catch, turning the angle right away. Creating my leg drag. Getting my head in nice and tight here. Charles tries to push me away. I put my head over his shoulder and just let gravity do its job. Some more attacks we can be looking into. Getting into some leg attacks. I'm getting here. The leg's nice and shelf for us. I can reach back, bringing the, covering the toe with my pinky over his pinky toe. I catch the foot. I don't want to finish here squeezing. I bring it to his butt, and I get the tap. From here, I also have the choice. Bring my foot close. My right knee now will slide, and I'm in to a knee bar attack. I can keep attacking the toe hold here. Once again, hold, control. Here, Charles will be trying to move around. I kill. I grab. Go for my toe. I can bring my leg close. Here my foot's a little too far up, so I just slide in. This knee slides along this line. I like to keep my foot in their belly. And this foot just traps on the hip. From here, knee bar, chicken wing. Maybe find something on a transition. Combining it with a little no grip footlock that I like a lot. I'm shelving, controlling, coming here. I'm gonna control Charles's ankle. I'm gonna start to fall back and I wanna bring this foot to this hip. So I'm stretching, I'm stretching, I'm stretching. Trap the hip. Now I'm gonna go both feet on this hip and I'm gonna raise and cross. I don't need to make a full grip yet. I'm just gonna pinch my elbow. My bottom foot covers my top foot. My knee pinches very tightly to the other side, creating a big bend in his leg. Now, this hand, I'm just going to cut, and I'm going to start to pinch my elbow down as I push my hips forward, getting the foot lock with no grip. I catch a lot of people by surprise with this one because obviously nobody's holding their ankle so they don't feel in danger. But what it does is it uses my hip bone as the point of leverage to get my submission. Getting my finish. I'm a big proponent of both feet 
on their hips. If Charles tries to reach up and grab me, keeps them away. He tries to push my feet off. One foot covers the other, reinforcing my strength. Now, I can pop my lock. So the general theory of the little door hinge is knee turn. So it's not just my leg, but it's my whole body. Applicable from oh. several positions. He's here. Same thing. This side. Taking his back, killing the single leg X. We saw it from the leg lock position, from the De La Hiva. So it's a very uh, useful little change at the angle of your body. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found it beneficial. Uh, we're going to keep updating the page with new techniques. I got some really tough killers here at Binder BJJ, so I'm constantly having to think of new ways to attack them. They're thinking of new ways to attack me, so we'll keep updating as we come up with new stuff. Follow and subscribe to the page. We'll have some good content for you.